Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to make something that has been, I want to say in the works for a long time, but it hasn't been started yet. So it is one of those projects that I've been thinking about for quite some time and I'm excited to start. So let's get right into it. So this is essentially going to be a prototype and I'm not creating some new fangled design. This is essentially going to be a modified Kukri style or recurve blade. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but I'm going to be using piece of field harrow spring steel, presumably 1080. Good tough stuff, has to get drug around the field forever and not break and have some good abrasion resistance as well. So if you're gonna use reclaimed steel, this could be a good candidate for a tool like this. So let's go ahead and put this in the forge and let me talk a little bit about what I'm making and why. I'm gonna use this, uh, this rack, this elk rack, to uh, help tell the story of what I'm making and why. And this is a, a bull elk that I harvested several years ago. Um, 535-yard shot. It was a nice hunt, middle of the day. I, never, I, don't, ever, I don't ever shoot anything early in the morning. I just don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but anyway, if you've ever hunted elk before, you know that their favorite place to hang out is the hardest country to get to. And when you're crawling through this country where elk like to hang out, uh, a lot of times you're going through brush. Uh, it, this particular elk, um, like I harvested down in uh, outside of Idaho City, a ways uh, on the Boise, Boise Mountains. And uh, that country down there is a little more open, but it's, they're big mountains, so you're you're uh, doing a lot of hiking over steep terrain, that kind of thing. Packing out is is uh, a chore. When I've hunted down there, it's been with family, of course. There's uh, mom and stepdad live down there, and uh, so we've been able to hunt with them. So that's that's been a blessing. They've got four wheelers and stuff. One of the considerations, anytime you're hunting elk and other game as well, is the kind of gear that you're gonna carry. And the more walking or hiking you do, the more of a consideration that can be. And I've had an idea in my mind for some time of creating a two-piece uh, wilderness blade kit, uh, specifically for crawling around on the kind of terrain that I killed this uh, bull elk in. And what kind of tools do you need to effectively field dress a bull elk like this and uh, also do other camp chores or um, even survival type chores if you get stuck out uh, for a night or something, uh, different things like that. You know, so you know, you've got the field dressing aspect, you know, cutting branches, you know, starting a fire, all, all the different things that you might do. So the question that I've been thinking about for some time is how do you put a, a small effective package together for a mountain rig, bushcraft, um, that kind of thing. And I think the answer might be a compact, uh, effectively designed recurve or kukri style blade coupled with a smaller, you know, three and a half inch bladed knife that you can do all the other stuff with and put those together in a rig. I think that would make a really sweet setup for this kind of thing and a myriad of other outdoor applications. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna work on this, this smaller recurve style blade and there's gonna be a lot of factors that come into play. Weight distribution on the blade, um, edge geometry, heat treat of course, all these different things. And so I think this is gonna be cool. Let's just do it.
as I move forward on this, it's going to be important that the weight of this blade is centered around the white part here. That's what's going to give us the chopping power and the cutting ability in a relatively small blade. So right now it's still the same thickness. I'm just trying to get this recurve in here and I'll, I'll start thinning this down. This bar is 5 16 inch thick right now. Probably get this portion through here down to about a quarter inch, somewhere in there. And, uh, and then, of course, it'll be uh, tapered towards the tip here too. So kind of a, a long swoop, and that's sort of what we're gonna be going for here. All right, we're starting to get the shape established on the, on the recurve and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and use the press a little bit to kind of thin out that middle section a little bit. You don't have to use a press, you can use a hammer. This is just a little quicker. Where are we at here? So we got a nice uh, recurve, almost a bolo type shape here towards the end, <clears throat> if that's the right term. And as you can see, it's not, it's not curved, or I mean, it's not bent, you know, as as a actual kukri is. That's on purpose. Uh, I think it's going to be significantly easier to carry and just to use for our applications without that kukri bend in it, if you will. And so right now, you know, we're at eight and a half. About eight and a half inches right there, which is which is a good length, I think. And in the thickness, I have that um, somewhat somewhat finished. As you can see, a little bit thinner through this portion here, a little bit thicker through here. Combined with the width, that's going to put our, our chopping power right out here where we want it. And so the sweet spot of this blade should be somewhere in here. Uh, but obviously, the entire edge will be use, useful for various applications. So now I have to figure out how to, you know, how I want to incorporate a handle. I'm going to do a full tang on this, and so I need to forge that out next. All right, so we're getting close. I have a bit of a taper on the tang, and I can obviously refine that on the grinder. It gets thicker up through here, right where the ricasso would be, or in that area. Thinner down through the middle, thicker out here at the wide part, and then taper down a little bit. Obviously, this is rough forged in. I'm gonna do a rough grind on it, and I don't have much of a bevel forged, a little bit right through here. But I was just trying to, I'm trying to maintain the shape of the blade that I want. Uh, that's a little more important right now to me than forging in a whole bunch of the bevel. Not a big deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this nice and straight. And then we'll let it cool and we can do a rough grind on it.
now that I have the blade rough ground, I have the handle uh, shaped a little bit more. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, I need to establish where my handle skills are going to go approximately and um, go ahead and drill holes for the bolts. And of course, we'll throw a lanyard hole in there as well. So I have this ready for normalizing, which is the next step, but I'm just kind of swinging this around a little bit and checking the feel out. And it is very, it's very uh, forward um, conscious or heavy. Um, yeah, you can already tell how this is going to be super effective. All right guys, we have our blade out of the tempering cycles and it is ready to finish grind. So again, what we have here is uh, varying thicknesses that we have to blend those all together. So it's a little different than uh, your n usual knife where you have uh, two, you know, one flat on each side that's, that's continuing down or something close to that depending on the type of grind that you're using. There's a lot of variation in this blade. So we'll go ahead and get that done. And um, I don't want to make this a full flat grind. I want to leave uh, some more material up here on the top third of the of the blade just to leave uh, some more weight and strength there as well. Alright, I have the bevels finished ground down, although I have more to do with hand sanding. This is probably one of the most challenging blades I've ground due to the uh, varying thicknesses throughout the blade. It's not it's not uh, simply following one line as you would normally. So uh, having to use the edge of the uh, work surface or platen um, in order to uh, move around those contours. So it's a little more challenging, uh, but I think I got it pretty close to what I, what I want. Okay, I have this hand sanded, except for I need to clean up the plunge lines a little bit and the spine, and then I'll be finished with that. But just, I actually went back to the grinder a little bit and, and took some more material off in places to, uh, to try to get this uh, blended nicely the way it, it needs to be. And this is the first time I've made anything quite like this, uh, particularly with the, with the uh, different thickness of blade throughout the length of the blade. And quite honestly, um, <clears throat> the next one that I make of these, or when I make more of these, um, I think it might be worth just dispensing with the uh, different thickness of spine and utilize the width of the blade uh, to, to give you that extra mass or that mass where you want it out towards, towards the end right in this, this area for that chopping power. Uh, that's just me. The other, other op op option might be to leave a lot of this a forge finish and uh, just grind the lower half or maybe even third of the blade, you know, forged in bevel and then grind that. That's probably a good option too.
What we want on this is a nice convex, or as some people have called it, an apple seed shaped uh, primary bevel at our cutting edge here. That's going to give us a um, stronger edge and good, good cutting ability. So just kind of roughing that in here. And um, I'm going to go test it a little bit, kind of see how it's working. And then we'll go ahead and put a handle on it. I don't know what that is, but it's pretty hard. Some kind of hawthorn or something, maybe? So I am pretty pleased with the chopping power that you have in this little size, comparatively. And let me show you the handle. So I have sort of an hourglass shape to the handle here. That really helps you maintain your grip, control your grip. With chopping for almost complete security you could and probably should add a lanyard that loops up around your hand this way and that'll keep you from keep the handle from slipping out of your hand 
but this design right here makes it um, comparatively much much easier to hold on to even as you're swinging with those blows and uh, doing that chopping and of course the 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 wider portion up here at the front also helps your hand from slipping, keep it from slipping forward. This is not a stabbing tool, so the danger of that's very minimal anyway. But yeah, working very well so far. So this is the edge after the antler chop and a little piece of antler stuck right there. But you can see no issues. So that's good. That's a good heat treat. Alright guys, well that's it. I, I'm pretty happy with the I smacked my finger on the log. Pretty happy with the uh, preliminary design on this. Obviously, I didn't come up with this design, uh, but I'm I'm thinking this got some. There's some good uh, characteristics here that we can put to use, and got to try out my pocket-sized diamond sharpener, which is still just as dangerous <laughs> uh, as before, especially with this recurve on here. Anyway. There's probably going to be a few things that I'm going to tweak to this uh, before I, or when I make some more, but I'm really happy with the overall performance and just what this size and design has to offer. So appreciate you guys coming along on this continued bladesmithing adventure. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.